So I guess you're still mad at me about the affair with your mother. Not really. No. Well, what about Helen? I think she might have preferred if that conversation didn't happen in private. She doesn't hold grudges too long these days. That is Kate Winslet starring in the gripping 2021 HBO series Mare of Easttown, a performance that earned her both an Emmy and a Golden Globe for Best Actress. Winslet also earned the toughest acclaim of all from the people of Philadelphia for nailing that very specific Philly accent. In her latest role, the Academy Award winner puts on an accent that's a little more difficult to place. Winslet stars as the dictator of a fictional European nation in The Regime, a dark comedy from the producer team that created another HBO hit, Succession. It is just the most recent acclaimed performance for the actress who's been nominated for seven Oscars and won five Golden Globes, four SAG Awards, two Emmys, and even a Grammy in a career that was launched by Titanic. Kate and I got together in New York the other day for a Sunday sit-down. At first, Kate Winslet wasn't so sure about playing a dictator. I would just sit with my eyes closed and say to my husband, just, I can't, I can't, I'm just, here's a great list of wonderful people who would be excellent oh, in this role. Oh, you prepared alternate. I have a full list. But the Oscar winner was the only choice. It is time to show America and the world precisely what we are worth. In the regime, Winslet plays Chancellor Elena Vernon, a vaguely European leader whose grasp on power and reality are slipping away. Be better at being normal. Good, let's start. I play a slightly larger than life, absurd, sometimes repulsive, sometimes oddly lovable, challenging female dictator. But then there's this other really fantastic unexpected dynamic, which is that she finds herself totally falling in love with a very unlikely ex-soldier who is employed to take care of her and only her and these two people become obsessed with one another and uh it's quite funny hmm. this mustard will help go on then snap me up like a sandwich where did you start was it the accent was it a look i felt instinctively right away i mustn't sound like myself i was quite nervous that if i opened my mouth and i spoke like that that people would automatically assume that they were watching the story about the British monarchy. So it was important right away that we were able to establish that this was somewhere else. It is an imagined universe. This is a character clearly has got mother issues, abandonment issues, serious father issues, and she's a leader, you know, and she wants to look poised. But of course, it's all a mask. Mm. So for me to kind of peek behind the curtain as to, okay, why does she keep saying, and knows I'm marvellous, aren't I? Let's go, yes, I, let's go, good, good, quick, quick, happy, happy. How do I look should not be a rhetorical question no, that you answer not. yourself, yes. right? How do I look? I look marvellous. <laughs> For Winslet, the regime was not just a juicy role, but a joyful return to her first love, playing with friends on a set. You do have a wonderful way with halfway to don't you? Coming out on the other side of COVID, I hadn't realized quite how much I had, well, not just missed being in a collaborative group of actors like that, but I, emotionally, I really needed it. Maybe a reminder of why you started acting, to be around people like that. That's it. That's yeah. exactly it. Born into a family of often struggling actors about 50 miles outside of London, Winslet was drawn to the family business. Was there any chance you were not going to become an actress, given where you came from? When you're little, you know, people say, when I grow up, I want to be a vet. I would think to myself, when I grow up, I want to be on stage. But I didn't know how to say it. But I certainly never thought that I would be in films. Roles in local theatre turned into a part on the BBC series Dark Season. But then, as someone once said, never listen to what people tell you, only what you tell yourself. And at 17 years old, a breakout lead in the 1994 film Heavenly Creatures. I am actually from England, Miss Stewart. Of course. Her introduction to a life in the movies. 
you look at the call sheet, your pickup time might be, you know, 3.50 a.m. or 4.10 a.m. It's like having a secret. I have my little coffee in my thermos. I'm running my lines. Who else gets to do this? And you don't take it for granted. No, oh, God, no. And being cast number one on that call sheet comes with a responsibility. You know, that's my job to walk on that set and make sure that everyone feels heard, supported, you know, that we're all going to go into this together. In 1997, the rising star quickly became a global celebrity when she played Rose alongside Leonardo DiCaprio's Jack in one of the biggest movies in Hollywood history. Winslet had just turned 22 when Titanic hit theaters, turning her life upside down overnight. Obviously, when Titanic comes out in 1997, everything changes for you. Yeah. What was that moment like in your life as that became a phenomenon? Actually, in its most acute phase of Titanicness, it was really not much fun because I didn't have kind of an infrastructure, I guess, that went hand in hand with being a famous person. Also, when you are given opportunities like that when you're young and you're a girl, you just shut up and be grateful. So there was a lot of kind of, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you, thank you. And so I felt like I really had to sort of stand up for myself. Do people really think I'm fat? Like, I'm not fat. I'm just a healthy, normal person. That's how I am. But kind of being scrutinized for it and having to almost explain myself or my shape was just wrong. I could just sort of take a step back and was able to at least recognize, hang on a second, I, okay, I'm famous, but I don't feel like I want to be famous. Also, I'm not good enough. I have to, I've got, I've got to learn stuff. I've got to experience the kind of anxiety of playing this role and that role and learn from it and make mistakes and grow. To quiet down her own life in the wake of Titanic, Winslet chose smaller movies that became beloved classics. My name's Clementine, by the way. I'm Joel. In 2009, she won a Best Actress Academy Award for her performance in The Rear. We couldn't just let them escape. We couldn't. We were responsible for them. At 48 and well on the other side of the Titanic whirlwind, Winslet lives with her husband and children in a quiet corner of England as a new generation of actors benefits from her experience. The fact that that doesn't happen anymore makes me want to weep for joy. I watch wonderful actresses now. They have a voice. They play incredible roles. They don't have to explain it. That equal level of ownership to the guys, they have it. Well, you have probably a role in some of that progress, which is to say this is not okay, what was happening to Kate Winslet. You know, if you were a step on the ladder. I sifted through the rubble and went through the country a bit <laughs> in the hope that maybe one day things would change. And so now I can quietly say, oh, maybe I did have a little bit to do with that. I hope I did. Just a bit. For the record, Kay was under the weather that day, but insisted on being there for our interview. Her only request, a spot of tea. New episodes of The Regime air every Sunday night on HBO and stream on Max. Our big thanks to the Grey Wind Restaurant in New York for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full extended interview with Kate Winslet, including much more about her experience after Titanic. You can find our conversation on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, a new Sunday Sit Down with one of the biggest artists in all of music, Kenny Chesney, as he prepares for another stadium tour with the release of his latest album and the moment he found his voice and began to build that No Shoes Nation. Kenny Chesney, next week on Sunday Today. Let's turn now and get another quick check of your local Sunday weather. Good morning. I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Ryan Miller. Today's the day, folks, if you want to go to the Tidal Basin and experience the warmest conditions over the next 10, today's the day. 65 degrees in this afternoon, breezy with some sun returning after some midday cloud cover. Much colder, though, for tomorrow and especially on Tuesday. And then by the end of the week, we're looking at the chance of rain coming back up here. Uh, a couple showers possible Friday and then a likelihood of rain next Saturday and next Sunday. Ahead on Sunday today, our highs and lows of the week, including one of the best tennis players in the world, sent scrambling during a match by a swarm of bees. We'll show you how this ended. But up next, our Sunday spotlight on one of the best players in baseball, making a big name for himself off the diamond at the alley. A trip to the lanes with Dodgers superstar and 300 bowler, Mookie Betts.
when Sunday Today comes right back. I'm the master of time.